So this stuff is so is so fun. It's interesting <laughs> and fun and like yeah, it gives for, you hope. But also just for like for storytelling, like yeah, like oh yeah, if you could do this, this, and this, like I just rewatched Martian. Martian. Uh, Matt Damon. Yes. The Martian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like. I also rewatched Interstellar not too long ago. They have, uh, th there's a showing happening around here somewhere. They're doing the, like the 10th anniversary. If nobody goes, is the sound even going to work? Probably not. If we're in a simulation. No, <laughs> but like, what's the most interesting to you from a place of like, ooh, if you were to tell a story. This is what you would want to do. I mean, the story that I am writing is the simulation thing is somebody who wakes up to realize that this is all a simulation. So that's what are I'm you, actually writing right now. Are you now. comfortable talking about any of it? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Because um, I my deadline with the publisher is the end of this month anyway. So I have to like, I have to wrap it up. Um, and then it's supposed to come out sometime next summer. Uh, but basically his character wakes up and realizes that um, they've been living a simulation and that- Wakes are, up in the simulation or wakes, wakes up, up from, from it. it. Yeah, and uh, finds out that humans are living in two different stations in orbit around the sun. Uh, the Lagrange points are going to be a big theme for me in my book. It'll be a cover. It'll be on that? the cover so you can see it. Um, they're basically the stable points in space with two bodies. So Earth and the sun. So, you know, the three body problem in uh, the show. Wait, what's it called? The And what's it called on Netflix? Yeah, I think it's called the three body problem, right? I don't know. On Netflix? I think so. I'm just yeah. in middle school over here. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm pretty that's, sure that's what it's called. Is that the is that a, the story of the guy that, the, that uh, has three wives? If only... But no, that would probably be more entertaining. No, no, no. Um, so th those are like stable points in space where basically if you put a station there, it wouldn't need a lot of fuel to stay in orbit. Like it would just stay in orbit on its own. Like this International Space Station? No, that needs to put on its thrusters every now and then to stay in orbit. Otherwise, it's going to crash into Earth. So explain this to me. I'm yeah. sorry. I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah. So anything in orbit is like slowly moving. Right. Right. Um, the space station, it's like more extreme. It's like actually sinking into Earth all the time. So they they put the thrusters on to like keep it back. I in thought orbit. when things are in orbit, it's always falling. But because of kinetic energy, it doesn't ever actually do it. Yeah. Yeah. But it is not kinetic. Uh, what am um, I talking about? Uh, it's like how a, how oh a, a convection oven works. The. Oh, my. I'm trying to figure. There's like a lot of words that are popping. Up. I'm like, or like. Orbital velocity, is that what you're talking about? Or it, it never <laughs> falls. Yeah, it never um oh my god. I mean Yeah, what's the word that I'm looking for? Yeah, it's essentially always falling. Right. Yeah, but it is slowly sinking at the same time. Well then are we going into the sun? Uh slowly but surely. But the sun is growing faster than we are sinking into it? Oh, you mean when the sun dies, it's going to expand and like right, but, eat but, us. But, but if the sun didn't expand and die, we yeah. would fall into it? I think it's eventually go in because I know for the moon, the moon's moving away from us. Right. I think the planets are moving. Right. So why is the moon moving away from us? Yeah, that I read into that and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then it was immediately. Yeah, I saw it. It was like, it was like yeah. literally centimeters or an inch or something. But it's like very per minor. year, it's still like yeah. trackable. You yeah. remember that thing where you put the penny in? And it goes, you <laughs> yeah. know, it goes like this and then, it, 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 you know yeah. what I'm talking about? And then eventually. Oh my God. I, I keep saying orbital velocity, which isn't, um, isn't exactly it. Terminal velocity. No, that's not that that's, that's, so many things are popping in my head now. I remember, I remember, no. uh, so, so f gravitational, at least on earth, it's 9.81 meters per second squared. Is that right? Yeah. Is that what I'm thinking? Yeah. I mean, there's that, that's like going straight down. Right. Yeah. But then, and then once it ex accelerates to uh, terminal velocity, it literally, it can't go any faster. Right. Yeah. 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 For that. It's so funny that it just popped into my head. Yeah. I think everybody remembers nine point. Everybody's like 9.8. Yeah. 9.81. Don't get it twisted. Is that, is that, I haven't looked at that in meters a long time. Squared, I know 9.8 yeah. and then I'm like. Because I remember there's a movie called Terminal Velocity because uh, uh, about jumping out of planes and stuff. And that came out, I'm guessing, in 93. I think it came out Definitely the same time that. at Lion King did. Because I remember <laughs> I went to it and I was with my mom, my dad, and my brother. And something scared me. So I didn't like it. So my dad and brother stayed in it. And I think my mom and I left and, she, and we went back into Lion King or something. Hell yeah. Better choice, I feel like. So I'm really, I'm so sorry I'm talking so much, but it's never going to change. Hey, whatever. The sun and the earth are both called what? What do you mean? You said these they're stations, bodies. they're stations that won't move or something? Oh yeah. So if you look at a Lagrange kind of map, there's uh, five points basically between earth and the sun that are stable. 
So you can put something there and it'll just sit there. Why? It's gravitationally stable. Um, it's between? Yeah. I mean, it's part of the, the three body problem uh, and just basically how bodies react with each other in sp when they're suspended in space. So you, one of the solution, one of the solutions to the end body problem is these two bodies, the Lagrange points. So in the book, I don't really dive into it. That's what's the three hard. body problem before you go on. Uh, basically how you can't predict three bodies and how they're going to interact with each other, which is pretty, I think if you solve it, I think it's one of the millennium. Pro no, it's not one of the millennium problems, but um, yeah, like nobody can figure out. There are proofs for it, what's but there's no three overarching. Bodies? Like if a asteroid was coming to earth, that's a two body problem. Uh, not, no, because the asteroid coming to earth is also being affected by the sun's Everything pole, is being so. affected by the sun's pole. Yeah. I mean, pretty much everything is a three body problem. Yeah. Got it. So, cause what happened was they put a simulation together of all of the planets and they were just like, oh, we, we wanted to see what the solar system is going to look like in a billion years or something like that. And so what happened was they moved Mercury by like a foot. <laughs> so it was really, really nothing. They were just like, oh, let's see what happens if we move it by a foot. And in, I don't know, like 0.01% of the simulations, Mercury like crashed into the sun or some, some crazy shit. And they were like, wait a minute. And then they started doing more tests and they realized that we can't actually predict three bodies if you go far out enough. Far out enough in time or in space? Yeah, in time. Yeah. That really like, oh my God, anything could happen. Like a butterfly effect kind of thing. Kind you of change a, a chaos little theory. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. And the Lagrange points are places that won't move. That is one one of the solutions to the end body problem. Yeah. Because you can have some solutions to it, but no single solution that solves all the scenarios. Um, and the Lagrange points are one of the solutions. Yeah. Yeah. So and this is where the human batteries are. That's where I put them, basically. Yeah. And who put them there? I put them there. No, I'm saying in your story. <laughs> um, Why, what, what purpose did, are they serving? Because Earth died. Oh. And they didn't have anywhere else to go. But then the Lagrange point would change if the if the Earth was dead. No, 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 no. I mean, because oh, the mass it is still, still there? exists. Yeah, right. yeah. It's just, but they wanted to go there because less fuel to stay in orbit. And then, and is there anybody maintaining and running it? Earth or the stations? The station. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. There's people that are they're alive and well. They use humans in a simulation to be a problem solving tool. They need the brain power, and so they keep a bunch of people in the simulation and present them with problems in the 21st century, like nuclear fusion and artificial intelligence. And when someone but don't they already have them solved? No, they don't. Oh, exciting! Yeah. So it's far enough away, but te technically speaking, they need. They still need the thinkers. Sometimes they put them in the 23rd century. Sometimes they put them in the 19th Why? century. They move it around Why? based on what they need. It depends on what they need. What do they need that's better in the 19th century than the 20th century? You'd be surprised. The early 20th century was when a lot of the quantum stuff was first starting to come out. So if you nudge one of those scientists just a little bit in the direction you need them to go, they can move into a different direction that you need. So if they need to figure out things, uh, for example, on democracy, they would maybe go to the 18th century or the 17th century yeah, instead yeah. of now. Right. When it's kind of a shit show. Right. Yeah. That would be kind of the idea. So it depends on what they need. So it's kind of a story of of the simulation also is a device for time travel. Ye, for the people who live in the simulation. Yeah, it is. A, is it, a, it is a time travel device, basically. Not for the people controlling it, which I call them the Senex, which is a Latin term that is incorrectly used on purpose. Um, they're the people who basically, they're human, but they live in the stations and they're not in the simulation at all. Man, I don't read. I think I can. <laughs> I mean, I hope you can. <laughs> but like, I'll read something and then I'll have to read it nine times again because I just don't retain I, it. This is not, it's not complicated. The main character also has no idea what the fuck's going on. So I wrote everything from their perspective of like, what the shit? Are you going to do, so, um, have an audiobook? Probably. Are you going to voice it? I hope not. Uh, I feel like my voice is like a little too deep and clear. I feel like it would be better to have like a more feminine voice. Do you want me to do it? <laughs> do you have a more feminine voice? Um, we can make, no, we make a not. soprano out of you. Uh, yeah, I just rewatched again. Cause you're like definitely not a tenor either. So, uh, that's really interesting and cool. Do you yeah. want to turn that into, into a story that is told on the screen? It was in the contract, actually. It's mentioned. Apparently, that's like normal. I didn't realize I've never written a book before, but um, that was in the contract. I'm like, here's how that's going to go. Right. Um, so, whole, because for who? Like, who has the IP for it? The publisher or you? Um, man, I was just trying to figure this out with somebody. Well, then it's, them. <laughs> you didn't yeah, fight to have it. I think they have, I have some input rights. 
Um, and honestly, I don't really care about owning it. I, I really just don't give a shit about all of that stuff. I just want to write the story and like, I want to do a Suzanne Collins, just like write the Hunger Games and peace the fuck out. Like that's kind of my my plan. Like I hope it's good enough where I can just be like, there you go, guys, and then I'm done. But yeah, it'd be cool if it was a movie. It wouldn't be too expensive either because um, the main character is really isolated. And half of the story takes place in the simulation anyway, which is our regular world. Would you say so. she just lives at home by herself all the time? Um, well, she, I put her in my hometown where I grew up because I know it best because they're like, write what you know. And I grew up in the fucking wild ass forest. So um, it was as I was writing it, I'm like, man, this book's not relatable at all. I don't think because my upbringing was not relatable. So I'm so? like, I should change it. Because I grew up in like a, a doomsday pr kind of town. Yeah, so you're a survivalist you know? then? Yeah, I mean, well, I'm not anymore or anything, but I grew up could with people you? like that. Do you know enough it's to where you could? It depends on the ecosystem. Everybody thinks I'm- the Mars. No, I would die. You couldn't make potatoes out of poop? I would die. <laughs> no, I would just poop and then die. <laughs> so, okay. um, that's good, <laughs> no, that's good I, merch. Yeah, I have poop and then die. That, yeah. is, that is life And on the in back, you say, botanist, I am not. <laughs> I am not at all. No. Um, Poop and then <laughs> die is such a dark, <laughs> such a dark kind of like, like microcosm of what this is. You know, it's one of the leading causes of death, apparently, like, like shitting yourself to death, like dehydration or something. Um, apparently a lot of people die on the toilet. Well, you were recently talking about Sopranos. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Jesus. That's a thing? Yeah. In the show? Yeah. I got to watch TV, man. I don't... <laughs> yeah, you do. I and don't know anything about TV or movies. And when you do, you'll care more about owning uh, your IP. Yeah. I think... Well, I was told it's pretty standard. Even my lawyer was like, yeah, this is pretty like... This is pretty much how this goes. And I was like, okay. What's the story of your shirt with all the planets? Oh, yeah. It's from the Planetary Society. This is all the... I think this is all exoplanets, right? Yeah. Oh, no. It's moons and stuff. Is an exoplanet a planet that doesn't have a star or is it a planet that isn't part of our star? Isn't part of our star. So most planets are exoplanets. Pretty much all of them are exoplanets. Not yeah. eight of them. There's a, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Did you clear your throat because you're a Pluto believer? I'm not, I couldn't care. I don't care. I, it actually, they demoted it when I was in college and it was, I was There was in, an uproar. Yeah, I was taking a cosmology course, I think, when that happened and everybody was just like losing their shit. And I was like, who cares, that, dude? A lot of you people know? don't realize, a lot of people think that cancel culture kind of started with, what's his name, that producer that did stuff to people? Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, but it really started with Pluto. <laughs> I mean, well, he was probably doing it before Pluto got called out, but- But he wasn't canceled. That's true. People- yeah were furious so mad, so mad which is such an yeah. interesting part of the point of psychology like, because i don't think that those people cared before i think what they care about is the change of the way they literally see the universe yeah, yeah and that's and their I, world yeah that's what i have to fight against every day go what do you mean how uh, so I mean. against other people who don't like the new ideas of stuff some people really love it and some people really hate it there's like no in between only because it challenges the way they thought things were yeah. not because they had a point of view on them at the time yeah exactly scoot do Blabbity blue.